One of my most commonly asked questions from students is, how is it exactly that we walk? What is the force that's propelling us forward when we take a step? Um, and the answer might be kind of surprising, okay? So imagine that here's the world, right? There's the Earth, we're just gonna put Earth here, right? And here is your foot. Okay. Now, what exactly is happening when you take a step? Okay, when you take a step, you are applying a force on the ground that's parallel to the earth, right? So in other words, the earth feels a force in this direction, right? Okay, now friction, if there's friction on this surface, right, then the earth, according to Newton's third law, has to apply a force back to you, right? And that force is the frictional force of the earth, okay? So whatever this force that you apply, so I'll call this applied force, that's gonna be, it's gonna create an equal and opposite force on your foot, which is static friction. Okay, so do these forces cancel out? No, they don't cancel out because the applied force is experienced by the earth, but the frictional force is experienced by your foot, right? So suddenly, just by pushing down on the earth in this direction, friction pushes back on you in this direction. Is there anything else in the X direction that's opposing that, that frictional force? Absolutely not. So if that's the case, right, if Newton's second law is true, the sum of forces equals mass times acceleration, that means that that static friction force is equal to mass times acceleration, which means that you start to accelerate with, a, with a, an acceleration of Fs over m. This is how you move. It's actually static friction. It's the friction of the ground that gets you to move forward, which explains why if suddenly, you know, this is not a pasture or a sidewalk somewhere, right? And instead, this is the North Pole. And instead, this is made of perfect ice here, right? If this is just absolutely perfect ice with no coefficient of static friction, then you are just going to slide right? Meaning you're not applying any force to the earth and the, for the earth is not going to apply any force to you. In other words, in that case, if this were ice, the static friction would be zero and you wouldn't move, which makes sense because when we try to walk on ice, we just slide back and forth, back and forth and don't make any progress. So without that frictional force, there's no acceleration. With a frictional force, there is. Okay. Now you might be asking, but Scott, if you're applying a force to the earth, shouldn't the earth have an acceleration, right? So if, the, if F equals MA, and the, the earth is feeling this applied force, FA, and the earth has some mass E, and there's an acceleration, right? Shouldn't then that mean that the earth accelerates backward at F applied over the mass of the earth? And the answer is yes, yes. That's how powerful you are. Every time you take a step, you actually make the earth slide back the tiniest bit. Now, why do we not notice this? Why does it not look like the earth is just sliding and moving every time one of us takes a step, every time there's an Olympic race? Well, it's because that applied force is tiny. Like, let's say this is just a few Newtons, right? Right. The mass of the earth is ginormous. It's many millions of kilograms, right? So the acceleration, the amount that the Earth accelerates backwards is virtually insignificant. It's virtually zero. We can just say it's approximately zero, right? But your mass is so small that you actually can get to accelerate in a way that's visible in the real world. This is how we move. This is how we take steps. Now you know.